Hi there everybody. Today we are looking at the loop of Henle, which is the part of the nephron in the kidney, and thinking about what its function is and how it works. Okay, so first of all, the function of the loop of Henle. If we draw our nephron, um, and what we know already is that filtrate, which is formed here in the Bowman's capsule, is going to move along through the proximal distal, uh, proximal convoluted tubule and then down through the loop of Henle and it will move through the distal convoluted tubule and down through the collecting duct. Now, what the body is trying to achieve is that as the filtrate moves down through the collecting duct, it wants that filtrate to become more and more concentrated. So that by the end here, when we have our urine, our urine is really, really concentrated. That's what our body is trying to achieve. And it's the loop of Henle that allows the production of this very, very concentrated urine uh, by the time we get to the end of the collecting duct. If we think about how that's going to happen, if we want the concentration of our filtrate here, to increase, and the way that you would increase the concentration is to remove water. So as we come down the collecting duct, water has to be removed from the filtrate to move out into the surrounding tissue fluid. And then if you think about what would cause that to happen, why will water move from one place to another? It will move down its water potential gradient. So if we want water to move out of the collecting duct, then that suggests that we need um, high concentrations of solutes in the tissue fluid surrounding the collecting duct. So we want there to be a low water potential. So we need to have something which is producing a high concentration of ions in this area um, around our collecting duct. And remember that this area here, in fact this whole area here, this is all the medulla of the kidney. So um, the role of the, of the loop of Henle, therefore, is to, um, is to achieve that very high concentration. And what it actually does is it creates a gradient. So if we um, have a sort of a, a fairly low concentration of salts um, at the top of the medulla near the cortex, as you move down deeper through the medulla, that concentration of solute increases until you have a very high concentration of solutes down here which is where you find the, the loop, the hairpin part of the loop of Henle. Okay, so if that's what the loop of Henle is trying to achieve, how does it do that? How do we get that highly concentrated medulla? The easiest place to start is if we think about what's happening here. Oh, sorry. If we think about what's happening here. Um, in this thicker part of the ascending limb. So in the loop of Henle, we have the descending limb, and then we have the ascending limb. And then in the ascending limb, we have a thin part of the ascending limb, and then a thick part of the ascending limb. Now, obviously, this process is continual, but by starting here, it can help us to figure out what's going on. So the first thing that happens is that sodium ions and chloride ions are actively pumped out of the thick part of the ascending limb. Okay, so active transport moves those ions out. So as soon as that happens, what you're doing is you're increasing the concentration of solutes in the tissue fluid surrounding this upper part of the loop of Henle. So if you're increasing the concentration of solutes there, therefore you're decreasing the water potential, that means that as uh, filtrate moves down the descending limb, water is going to be lost. Now an important um, part here is that the walls of the descending limb and the ascending limb are different. So the walls here, so the two walls um, of the collecting duct of the descending limb, as you can see here, they're permeable to water, uh, but they are almost impermeable to uh, sodium ions and chloride ions. Some sodium does actually move across, so it's not completely impermeable, we're going to ignore that for now to keep it slightly more simple. Um, but it is very permeable to water. However, the ascending limb 
this whole part of the ascending limb here, the whole thing, is impermeable to water. So no water is able to move, and that's important because otherwise, when the sodium and chloride ions move out, if this were permeable, then water would just follow it, and that does not happen. So, permeable to water, impermeable to water. Okay, so as the filtrate moves down, water continues to move because this whole area here has got a lower water potential compared to the filtrate. This bottom part, the, uh, the hairpin, is impermeable to everything, okay? So what you end up with here is actually a very concentrated filtrate by the time you get down here because so much water has been moved, so you have very concentrated filtrate. Because it's very concentrated, as soon as it starts moving up through the ascending limb, sodium and chloride ions move out, but this time they just move passively. So these green arrows here represent just a passive diffusion of sodium and chloride ions. But again, that means that the, this is uh, becoming very, very concentrated. Now, this whole process is, um, the effect is called the countercurrent multiplier. So what we've looked at here, we've looked at it in a sort of fairly static way. It's quite hard to understand how you actually end up with an increased concentration, which is what we said. So the concentration of solute up here is low, and then as you come down, the concentration gets higher and higher until it's extremely concentrated down here. Just looking at the diagram as it is, it's quite hard to understand how that works. The countercurrent multiplier is to do with the fact that you've got fluid coming down this way and then up in the opposite direction. So it's counter. Counter means opposite. And because of that counter flow, that counter current, the effect of, inc of, of adding our solutes in here multiplies as you move down. I'm not going to go into explaining how that works because it's, um, a, it's quite complicated and you don't need to understand exactly how it happens. But if you just understand that we've got this countercurrent multiplier, which is because we have the fluid flowing in opposite directions, and the effect of it, um, and these processes we've just described, so the active transport of sodium chloride here, the movement of water into the tissue fluid here, and the diffusion of sodium and chloride ions here, the consequence of all of that means you get an increased concentration of solutes as you move down through the medulla. This, therefore, leads to our, um, the whole point of our loop of Henle, which means that when we end up with our tissue fluid moving down to the collecting duct, the whole way down, because the concentration of the tissue fluid around it is getting more and more concentrated, water leaves, which means the water potential um, of, the, of the filtrate, if water's leaving, the water potential of the filtrate decreases, but it's okay because the concentration of the solute of the sorry, the concentration of the tissue fluid is also decreasing, which means water can still move out, can still move out, can still move out. So what we end up with, as we said right at the beginning, is highly concentrated urine. And that's how the loop of Henley works. Thanks.